In this lecture, I will discuss how to design a masonry wall. Means how to design a brick masonry wall. I will discuss in this lecture in detail. A brick masonry wall may be designed considering a maximum slenderness ratio of 16. First class bricks, 1 ratio 6 cement sand mortar and the allowable axial compressive stress using a simple procedure given below. First of all, how to calculate the total load on the wall? That formula I have discussed in the foundation design of brick masonry, 385 into submission of Li, etc. Now this is the formula for the allowable axial uh, compressive stress of brick, brick masonry. Allowable compressive axial compressive stress of brick masonry. The formula is 0 0.25 fm dash strength of masonry unit 1 minus r divided by 40 uh, our whole square bracket close where r is cylinderness, cylinderness ratio of the brick this formula will be used if the cylinderness ratio is less than or equal to 29 now two things comes uh, in our mind what is cylinderness ratio and why 16 cylinderness ratio is used and why a 1 ratio 6 cement sand mortar is used. So I will go further in the theory so that uh, I come to some point for the discussion why the R and slenderness ratio or what is slenderness ratio is for the brick wall. Here is the masonry wall and uh, masonry wall and its footing design. The procedure here is discussed First of all, I will just brief what is masonry strength and the brick strength. In the brick strength, we uh, str uh, perform a test on one unit of brick and place in the UTM, uni uh, universal testing machine, and we get the strength of one brick. A and the masonry strength, that is, we uh, make a unit of bricks, uh, just like courses uh, on the one side uh, header face, on the other side stretcher face, we make a masonry unit as per code and uh, and perform the test on this masonry unit in the UTM. The strength of this masonry unit is called masonry strength. So that's the difference uh, between strength of a brick and strength of masonry. So the uh, strength of masonry for the first class bricks that is 10.5 megapascal but that is reduced 25% when the bricks are wet means soaked in water. So there is again some theory, uh, the strength that we get in the UTM due to, uh, due to first class brick, that strength is much more uh, uh, than the, its actual Y due, the, uh, due to the end platen effect. Due to the ends mean from the uh, upper jaws and lower jaws effect. Uh, this slenderness ratio of this small brick that is less so that's why its strengths we get more so the author is recommended that instead of using this strength of brick 10.5 we will use half the, of the strength just like 5.25 megapascal so uh, this is the strength of one brick so when we test in the masonry unit uh, the bricks first class bricks with uh, mortar the crushing strength of block masonry is about 75% of the crushing strength of the brick when we use 1 ratio 3 cement sand mortar and it is 65% when we use 1 ratio 4 cement sand it is 45% uh, 1 ratio 6 cement sand mortar 35% uh, when we use mud plaster with pointing or plaster on both sides so here the uh, brick masonry strength that is fm dash uh, in 1 ratio 3 cement sand mortar that is 4 1 ratio 4 3.4 when in the fifth brick work in mud mortar means uh, the jointing of the bricks are done with the mud and on the outside of the wall the plaster is present plaster is present then the uh, masonry strength that is 1.8 so so at the end this is one point means uh, this is the compressive strength of brick so to get the tensile strength we can take 1 by 15 of 
1.8 uh, for brick uh, for mud and for getting the strength of 1 ratio 3 we can take 1 uh, over 15 into 4 we get the tensile strength of brick uh, we almost ignore and do uh, in the design the tensile strength because that is too low now the second step is story height of the wall story height of the wall that is uh, uh, for example here see there is a foundation and here is a uh, floor so the uh, the distance between two spots that is the uh, story height of the wall the story height of a wall is the center to center height between lateral spot mean uh, the distance from this center of the spot and from the foundation so that is the story height of the wall uh, for a wall free at top the height of wall is measured from the plinth to the top of the wall because at top there is no uh, spot so no need to take from center so we will take uh, from the foundation to the top of the wall now that is the new thing that is the effective height of wall that we use in the design so what is the effective height of the wall there are three conditions for wall with lateral spot at top here you can see this wall has spot at the top due to the slab or due to joy slab whatsoever there is a spot at top and spot at bottom so we will get the effective height whatsoever the actual height for example the actual height is h we will multiply with 0 0.5 and get the height of effective height of the wall this is the first condition uh, for walls with no spot at top but with a considerable vertical height h effective height will be 1.05 to the actual height means if there is a no spot at top uh, then there uh, no spot at top but there is a vertical vertical load is present but not there is no spot uh, for, uh, then the effective height that is 1.05 of actual height the third condition uh, there is no spot at the top but also there is no vertical load at top then the effective height will be two times the actual height that is the uh, effective height then the effective uh, width of the wall or effective thickness of the wall so that is the uh, outer dimensions of the wall so for example without plaster uh, the nine inch wall has the effective height nine inch so that's how we take the effective width that is the effective height and the, uh, there is another that is effective thickness or effective width now what is slenderness ratio it is the ratio of length to thickness it is defined as the ratio of lesser of effective height and center of center spacing of lateral spot uh, in simple words to the effective thickness uh, the slenderness ratio actually is length to thickness ratio uh, that is the simple uh, formula so uh, uh, in the upper length divided by thickness length can be either effective height or center to center spacing we will use lesser of both in the formula of slenderness ratio so it should be not more than 18 for ordinary walls 20 for solid unit or fully grouted masonry unit where is a high content of cement is present However, it may be increased to 24 for stronger cement sand mortar, uh, 32 for 1 ratio 3 cement sand mortar. Uh, this is the authored provision, uh, authored recommendation, but not the code. According to IBC International Building Code, the slenderness ratio for non bearing walls may be kept equal to 18 for exterior walls and 36 for interior walls so that is the simple definition of cylinder ratio is for walls the uh, symbol is r that is the length of the uh, uh, length of the wall uh, or sorry height of the wall divided by thickness ratio uh, uh, thickness of the wall so lateral sport i that whatsoever the sport uh, either uh, it is supported by by pins or supported by slab so whatsoever that are the lateral spots minimum thickness for masonry wall the uh, the court has recommended that your minimum thickness for load bearing walls should not be less than 200 millimeter means should not be less than 8 inch 
now wetting of brakes definitely for uh, doing the course work uh, of brakes we wet the brakes before laying on the walls now the next is allowable stresses so here is as per UBC uniform building code there is a formula given for uh, allowable axial compressive stress that is 0 0.25 fm dash that is a masonry strength that I have shown in this fm dash into 1 minus r over 40 uh, power whole square bracket close for cylindrical ratio less than or equal to 29 and for cylinder ratio greater than 29 that is 0 0.25 fm dash 20 over r that is the axial compressive stress of brick uh, of masonry to get the allowable flexural mean bending compressive stress that is the 0 0.33 fm dash so that's how we use this slenderness ratio and uh, allowable axial stress now i will go further that is again other formulas combined compressive stress allowable tensile stress allowable shear stress allowable shear stress in shear wall so next thing for our design of wall that is important that is seven and eight point extra load factor for concentration of floors extra load factor for example if we uh, designing a wall there is some eccentricity like uh, there is no not the uniform load why uh, in our wall mostly there are openings like opening due to door due to windows so author uh, has recommended that you should for the designing of wall you should use the factor gamma 1 1.3 second uh, extra load factor for eccentricity of load why uh, when we place the footing uh, it is option that here the steps of the footing may be present on the one side due to the uh, and not present on this other side why for example your exterior walls are attached to the uh, other person or other person uh, uh, neighborhood uh, property so you will not be able your uh, uh, one side of steps on on his property so you have to uh, construct the exterior walls without the steps on the one side so that's the condition uh, you have to again magnify if your condition is just like that uh, for load magnification for exterior wall design 1.5 for exterior wall 1.35 for edge wall and uh, edge wall means there is no steps present on the on the one side and exterior wall that is normally uh, normal exterior wall and for the corner uh, masonry column that is 1.7 so now i will go again uh, from where i came back 